Thank you so much, Adam. Uh, and great to see everyone uh, today. Thanks so much for joining. Uh, my name is Brent Lager. I'm president of Uncover KC. Uh, and as you can see on the screen, we are a nonprofit that focuses on uh, volunteerism and how to grow uh, engagement in our community. Uh, quick background, started it over 11 years ago with a buddy who's also named Brent. Um, and we, uh, we, we were looking to volunteer, found it difficult to do, uh, not because there wasn't opportunities out there. We just didn't really know where to go. Um, and then we had tr struggle, hard time getting connected to those, uh, nonprofits, uh, simply because of life, right. Um, uh, uh, capacity issues, contact information, outdated, uh, life stuff on our stuff. So it, it was, it was, um, just a frustrating kind of experience when we were wanting to, to to make change and me and, and brent thought it might you know there should be an easier way of doing this if we made it easier more people would and that's how we could make bring about the change and we didn't want to we didn't want to duplicate services we didn't want to um uh you know replicate anything but we simply wanted to make it uh easier for people to get involved um and and then that's what we've been doing for the last 11 years uh at first, it was just, you know, connecting our mission uh, of, of connecting people, building bridges and helping helping spark action along those connections. Um, and then it grew. Uh, it grew up throughout the years. Uh, our experiential learning programs really took off. Um, we uh, also, you know, uh, our, our volu uh, volunteer management uh, it was something that's grown and become kind of our cornerstone now, uh, in a way in which we help, uh, nonprofits and local events, you know, recruit to manage their volunteer departments. Um, we have corporate social responsibility programs, helping businesses when their staff get engaged and be those active community leaders they want to be, maybe they just don't have the time or capacity to do it. And so we get brought in and then community development, you know, getting, getting brought in to manage community wide projects. Uh, some of the ones we've done have been mental health, uh, the digital divide and currently uh, field trips accessibility. So um, it's it was funny when we got going. Uh, I really didn't know that this was a need or a thing. Uh, I just really wanted to volunteer. Um, and then as you know, as we started to deep dive deeper into it and 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 kind of figure out if this was a need or how we could help, uh, you know, these things just started to kind of naturally happen. Um, and after the first couple of years of, you know, getting our, 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 uh, tax exemptions and all that taken care of, of figuring out what a board of directors meant and how to meet and, and what all the processes that go through that, uh, we then started to kind of tap into experiential learning. Uh, we, we found that there's a lot of students out there that wanted to volunteer. And so, um, and, 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 and if we could find ways of going to them, and making it easier, bring it into the classroom or helping get them off campus through the means of the resources that were available. Um, or even using interests like virtuality uh, as a way of, of, of getting them involved. Um, that was our first really big program shift was, uh, and, and we found our foothold. Also realized there's not a ton of money in that. And so it was like, you know, there was enough to get by for one staff and our one staff member and a whole bunch of volunteers, but like, how do you actually grow uh, you know, systematically. Um, and so that's really where we started to shift uh, or add to our collective impact. Um, I had mentioned the corporate program. Uh, we also have a courts program. We help defendants locate hours for diversion cases. Um, we started to get these community-wide projects. And then really, I think the game changer has been volunteer management. Uh, we been doing it for a while, six, seven years, uh, marathons, just getting hired to to recruit a whole bunch of course monitors or aid station and then, and then managing the day of. Um, and then when COVID hit and coming out of COVID, we, we were approached by some nonprofits of doing it full time for their for their volunteer departments. Um, as you guys might not, may know, the turnover rate for volunteer coordination is very high. The churn rate is very high. It's just a it's a it's it's a uh, an occupation that has a ceiling, doesn't always have a ton of funding or resources, has high stress, low um, you know uh, low staff capacity to go with it. So it's just a lot, and so our solution kind of started to become a way of of, of handling that. Um, you know, it's new. We're not on campus 
I would say 80, 90% of the time for our clients, but we're managing their volunteer departments, you know, some as large as Union Station 450 to some as small as uh, CED with, with uh, 45. Um, and we're doing that remotely and through communication and our three-step process of, um, you know, the three R's, recruitment, recognition, and uh, re um, retention. So that's really where we have grown over the years um, and, and how we've made an impact. Uh, like I said, 2013 was the kickoff when we, me and Brent went our first time to Morning Glory Cafe. I don't know if you've ever been down there, downtown KC. Uh, and since then, we've been just connecting volunteers um, and, and helping them at, get active. Uh, you can see we just passed the $5 million service value mark um, just, I think, like two weeks ago. So it's been that's been a pretty cool, uh, cool uh, milestone to make. Uh, for those that don't know, if every volunteer hour for, you know, one volunteer hour is worth uh, $31.90, according to the independent sector and what the IRS uses. And so it's a great valuation if you ever are trying to put some, you know, quantitative data behind your volunteer programs and, and just even even your volunteer staff, your board members, those are all volunteer hours. And, and so, like, you know, if you really want to show the value of that, that's there. there's a number right there. And it, and it seems like to, to rise every year. Uh, ways people get involved, they can connect, they help with our programs, our financial, you know, support. Uh, we are a unique nonprofit in which we, we really use service enterprise. And I'm going to touch on that here in a minute uh, when I start, you know, kind of talk about our resiliency, um, uh, you know, resets that we do every year. And so uh, it, it really, you know, we're, we are a 90% earned revenue uh, of, of our fund, of our uh, funding. Um, that's how we sustain ourselves. Um, and I, I think often it's because we, you know, we are a third party nonprofit, we help other nonprofits. And so donors and grants don't always met, match with that. You know, we do have some really great donors and some really grant, great uh, grant partners that, you know, uh, uh, fund uh, our collective impact. But for the most part, we've had to go out and use our expertise and our, our experience to, to, to kind of uh, grow our mission and, and our sustainability. And so um, it's been really interesting. I would not have been a model I ever thought about. I had no idea what service enterprise meant before I started this adventure and it's just kind of grown since. So, um, you know, that is just kind of uncovered in a nutshell. Um, Jaden Hicks is one of our new hires. Uh, so obviously he did not update the slideshow, uh, but uh, it is, um, you know, it's been quite the journey just from where we've been today to you know, and where we were four years ago, where we were eight years before that, um, it's just I, I I I don't know I I don't know how to explain it outside of just finding and connecting with a lot of people that believe in similar things and just constantly continuing trying to get better together, um, and and so you know we are always trying to do these these two two weeks or one month sprints. And then we take a pause and we do retrospectives on those and decide, you know, what's working, what's not. Do we need to make changes? Do we not need to make changes? Um, and that's what goes across the organization from our staff to our board of directors to our community, our committee volunteers, our advisory council. We even have interns. Um, that's kind of a process we use. And so, um, you know, over the years, we've got better and better at it, uh, really taking time to step back and see what's working, what's not, uh, measuring that, you know, how, how do we measure that? How we measure that impact, how we measure that success. And, and then, you know, uh, getting, making ideas and getting advice on how to, to change, you know, from then on and, and then just not being afraid of doing it. Uh, that's, I, I think that is one thing is for us, we always, you know, failure, failure is just not trying. Um, and so anytime we're trying something, if it doesn't work or we have to sunset it, or just didn't, hit like we thought that's actually you know good in our book in a way because then we know it's a point that we can take and go forward so so all those things kind of we 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 uh you know want to fail forward in a lot of ways and, and that helps us get to the point where we can succeed and and so um that's often you know led to a lot of different ways of doing that um and one particular way we do that every year is our organizational retreat um i'm not for sure if uh you know uh, you guys do this with your nonprofits or not, but every year, usually in January for us because of our schedule, um, we, uh, we we get together as an org 
and uh, every level from paid staff to volunteer to board members to committee volunteers, the advisory to those interns. Everyone's invited, and we spend two and a half hours on a Saturday morning, and we just walk through uncover as a whole. Um, and, and there's various ways that we do that. And we call it resiliency uh, reset every year, you know, every 12 months, it kind of helps us kind of figure out, okay, where are we at? What do we need to focus in on on the upcoming year? And, and, and then, you know, what do those action steps look like? Um, and so what I'm about to show you is something that I was, you know, given from a, a um, from a advisory council member who, you know, works for a bank and, and he kind of showed it to me what they did. And, and then I took it <laughs> and copied it and just kind of customized it for our needs. But um, it really allows us to, you know, to, to kind of hone in on, uh, you know, a line on what do we need to do, um, you know, uh, as an organization in, in, in the year ahead. And so that's really where, I, you know, when they asked me today, what I like to talk about, you know, um, it, that's really where we have gotten to in our um in our side. So here is kind of how we started. You know, um, our first slides is, is, is we talk about is how do customers see us from a uh, customer perspective? Um, and again, you know, customer is a kind of weird word for nonprofits. So, um, but, you know, you can put supporter perspective in there or donor perspective, however you, whatever type of, you know, different perspective you want. Um, so we, you know, uh, we kind of talk about that. What, how do customers see us? Um, and what I'll do is anyone who's in attendance, I'll have them break up into their committees that they work on, you know, so that way, uh, they, they know some, some people that they, they feel comfortable and we'll break them up into small groups. Um, if there's a board member who's not on a committee, I'll stick them on a committee that are, you know, with the group, I think that'll be helpful. Same with staff. If I have a staff member that's not on a volunteer committee, I, I will, um, you know, just put them into where I think they would be where what, what can we, you know, could use their voice and their, their thinking. And I break them up into small groups uh, and, and, you know, anywhere from four to six. And I have them just talk about this question from the point of view of their committee or of their board of directors seat or of a, as from their uh, paid staff, you know, VP of operations point of view. Um, and what I do is they all write them down on sticky notes and then we get on a, you know, we're at a big whiteboard and, and we have and just put them up there on the whiteboard. Uh, I usually give them anywhere from about two minutes. Um, I'll give them every 30, 45 seconds. I'll give them a, you know, hey, you got a minute left or you got 30 seconds left. Um, and it kind of really pushes it. Sometimes I'll push it out to five, five, six minutes. If, if I hear them talking and I see a lot of post-it notes going, I don't really want to, um, you know, get rid of that. So so I, I will put that on a whiteboard. Uh, this particular Jamboard you see here, which I love Jamboards when they're going away in October, but uh, um, if you know, there's a lot of different uh, other ones out there that you can use. Um, but we used the Jamboard during COVID when we couldn't meet in person. And that's really where we started. So um, this retreat right here is actually what it looked like after we did, we broke up into groups. So, um, you know, how do customers see us? And the different colors I coordinated it with was the different committees um, and had and kind of those I thought and those thoughts, how they came together. Um, it, and again, it, it was, it's really helpful because you get this kind of shared mindset, but you know, or shared vision or ideas, but it's from all these different angles. So it, it, it kind of get out, you get out of tunnel vision, which is what I really love. I can't stand hearing myself talk. I will not watch this recording, not because I don't love Adam's work, but because I just can't stand my own voice. And so, but like, you know, and, and I think it also goes to the point is like, you know, the more people we have giving ideas, giving feedback, the better and stronger we can get. Um, now, that doesn't, doesn't mean every idea is great. No, 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 not at all. Um, but that does mean, it does mean it's, you know, you can still find uh, some value in it. And so, this is what it looks like. And, and imagine being on a whiteboard in your office uh, or uh, a, a board member's office. We actually did our retreat this year at Ron McDonald House because Adrian Flex on our board and she's amazing. And the staff there at Ron McDonald House is wonderful and they were welcoming. And, and so we used their room and, it, you know, and, and so this is what we walked away with. And then, and then the next question after we kind of talk about this is from an internal point of view, what must we excel at? Like what is, 
if, if I walk away and you walk away this today about uncover, what would you say that we are great at? And, and for us, we want that to be volunteer, volunteers, volunteerism, volunteer management, volunteer engagement, just volunteers across the board. Um, and so, you know, but that is a really broad term. So if you're going to get even chiseled down further, what would we must, what must we excel at from internally, um, to get, to get to that point. And so again, I have the same groups and I'll break them up and again, give them two to five minutes, have them write post-it notes. And then at the end of those five minutes, I have them, everyone put their post-it notes on the board and we go through it as a org and we talk through it and we walk through it. And that's really where, you know, um, some really ideas come from. So for our second slide, you can see right here, like, you know, different ideas of what, what must we excel at internally for us to bring about that, that, that um, perspective that we want customers to have, um, you know, telling our story, uh, being more visible in Kansas City. Uh, communication was a big one that year. Um, you know, if you move over to the pink level, making new connections, diversity, equity, inclusion, internal awareness about an organization. Um, these always, these all were becoming areas that maybe I didn't know about, or I did know about it. And I just didn't, I didn't spend much time on it or we didn't spend much time on it, but because of this reset and this retreat, we're able to kind of take a step back and, and, and look some of our blind spots. Um, and so that's why I really, I mean, we do this every year. This is, uh, we kick this off every year. Um, and and, and it, it really has become, you know, a bench park. And, and I think our organization really likes it because everyone gets aligned um, from our, our, you know, most valuable employee or, or volunteer, I should say most valuable, the person who does the most work to our newest intern who does, you know, is just getting their feet wet. Um, it's, 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 it's just wonderful to have everyone come together and, and, and providing feedback input, which to be honest with, doesn't really happen that often because of, of how siloed we can get as a nonprofit, as an organization and how, you know, just sometimes we don't make space for everyone. So our third question we ask is how can we continue to improve and create value? And this comes from an innovation and learning perspective for us. Um, you know, what, you know, where can we get better? We, 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 we talked about, you know, if you go back to the first slide, we talked about how are we currently seeing that we talked about what do we need to be best at? And now it's like, what can we get better at? And where are those spaces that we can make value? Um, and, and again, I will break them up and, and I, I usually just keep in the same groups. Uh, there are times, uh, some, some years I'll mix it up. Uh, maybe I'll have all board members together answering these questions, or I'll have all my development team answering these questions. Sometimes I'll mix them up each slide. I'll switch them up and be like, you know, Hey, move them around. And, and so then there, there are different voices and different ideas coming from different uh, uh, point of views. Um, you know, for us this year, we started to get some ideas of where we could improve uh, relationship building partnerships uh, was it was a big one. Um, you know, uh, also getting feedback from customers from people we work with volunteers seeking, um, you know, community impact and, and feedback. Um, and then, you know, focusing resources into our, our revenue sustainability. Uh, back in 2022, we had, we were, you know, recovering from COVID and getting back, finding our feet financially, but we were still kind of in a very um, limited, uh, you know, financial spot. And so that was something that year that we had talked about and it became very evident that we needed to focus more in on. And then the last piece, which actually leads really well into what I was just talking about, is how do we look to shareholders? Uh, what is that financial perspective? Um, and again, shareholders is a really weird, weird term for nonprofits. Um, you know, if you want to put donors, put donors in there. If you want to put supporters, put supporters in there. You know, I, I, I took this from a corporate world and, and we customize it for our nonprofit means. And it's really helped us look at this. And so have whatever term you need to use. But, um, you know, how do we look to uh, people that can help us grow, um, whether that's from a financial perspective, whether that's from a time, equity, talent um, perspective, or whether they're from connection, networking, um, all those things are all, you know, have impact of some, you know, some sense. Um, and so this is kind of, you know, where we, we looked at, you know, um, and, and it was interesting to hear 
Uh, again, a lot you, you get it when you, if you if you can do this with your your org, and you might have a lot of people in your org, um, and that's okay. I think these are worthwhile. That's why I do the small groups because you can break them up in small groups. Let them make sure they feel heard. Have them submit their their ideas, and then you might not be able to get to all of them, but you'll have them. Um, and and that's really you know that the feedback there, and it is it's again how do we kind of get outside of our own shoes. And, and see what we're, our org is really like from from different perspectives. And that's really Brett, where resiliency is um, and how you get there. Hey, Brett, it's Adam here. Got a question yeah. from, from Kim. Um, she asks, uh, to understand your organization better, what is uh, Uncover KC's annual budget? How many staff do you have? Yeah. How many volunteers does your organization have? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, currently we have... Uh, oh, five full-time employees. Uh, we have nine contractors anywhere that goes anywhere from five to 15, 20 hours a week. Uh, we have nine board members, um, four committees of volunteers. So not on the board member level, but committee volunteers that meet about once a month and give us anywhere from three to four hours on projects throughout that month. Um, and Committees range from anywhere from uh, three to five volunteers on those. Uh, then we have advisory council, uh, which meets quarterly and kind of helps us stay on track from a 30,000 foot view. Um, and we have about five or six people on that. They meet, uh, and again, it's almost that level, that pyramid, right? They they don't have the time uh, or the they're not the, you know, the phase of life where they can be on the committee or be a board. They're able to still help by that advisory council. And then internships, we range anywhere from one to as many as six or seven interns a semester. Um, and, and I say all this, this was not like this from 2013. This is where we're at after 11 years of growing it out. Um, and so really, but all those just started with one person or two people in each of those spots and we just kept growing. Um, and so if you're, if you're still, you know, in that spot, uh, so, you know, don't, I don't, I don't, don't feel overwhelmed that you have to have all those spots filled. Um, I really just focus on what's the biggest priority for the present and, and, and then start working. And as you go along, try to fill the other one. And if you're a really big organization already, uh, I'd be intrigued to know how many of these spots or how many of those levels of engagement or areas do you have lined out? So uh, in total, we range anywhere from 35 to about 45 people as part of the family that are helping us directly. Um, if you have any more questions, please just throw them in there and Adam will, will, will jump right in for me to help get those. So this is kind of where we end up after we do our four slides. Um, and at, in the end, you have four or a couple of walls of whiteboards or, or whiteboards with, with post-it notes all over them. And, and it's a lot of feedback directly from people who are involved with you. Um, you could also invite like if you have donors that are heavily involved, I mean, you can invite whoever you want to this. It, it, it really it allows you to kind of pinpoint areas that you need to get better. What we did was after we did these four, we took a small break. And then in this particular year, we started to pinpoint issues we need to talk about. So for us, fundraising, as I mentioned earlier, was uh, in 2022 was a, a point. Um, and it was like, and so we started to go through our next, exercise with it was rose, roses, thorns, and buds. And for this exercise, what we do is the roses, we use it, you know, over the last 365 days, what has gone really well? What have been our roses? You know, what is, uh, you know, um, just been our, our achievements and our goal, you know, um, just really bright, bright spots in that area. Uh, again, or the same time frame, 365 days, what, what have been our thorns? What have been areas that we stubbed our toes or we didn't do well in? Or maybe even things that maybe we didn't, we, we didn't do well in, but they're just, they're areas that are not being focused on at all, or just, you know, things that we need to improve upon. And the last one, where are buds? You know, where can we grow and get better at? Where are areas of opportunity in this? Um, you know, when we talk about stuff we do well and stuff we do, we don't do well, uh, where are the space there that we can grow in those? And that's really where are the buds. So as you can tell, again, whiteboard, right? <laughs> and, um, uh, and what I've done in the past a couple of different ways, you can keep the same groups that you break them up into, or you can come all back as a whole and just 
have an open discussion. By that time, everyone has been chit-chatting for a while. And so I have found that everyone is a little bit more open to, to, to speaking out loud. As you know, you know, I'm shy. And so sometimes I have a hard time speaking up. I also get in my teacher mode on this and I just, or in volunteer mode, and I just call on people, especially ones I know have good ideas, but sometimes they, they, they can get a little quiet. And so I'll just call and be like, hey, what do you think? And, and this is what we do. So um, I've also done it where you break them back up into groups. You break them back to small groups, do the same kind of process and come back as a large group and talk about it. So uh, for this particular year, fundraising, you know, we had, we did, we did pass our goals that year. We were, our reoccurring donors were, was going well. Uh, however, some of our, 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 our issues was connections um, and, and establishing, establishing connections. The communication process really wasn't there as where it should have been. And just, it was a lot of labor, you know, it was a lot of time and capacity and fundraising that we weren't there. And so what the buds became was how do we kind of, you know, where could we go? A new director was brought up, you know, how do we get help there? Uh, one large signature event, which we had not done in years because of just the lack of return on investment with it. And, and so actually we did this and we've done it for a couple of years now and it's grown and we've, We've we've not only hit our goals but doubled our goals this year in the most recent signature event. So, it, it's just amazing what can come from this. You know, another example next was content strategy. What were some of our roses? What some of our thorns? Were some of our buds? Buds were content strategy. And again, this was across the board of our entire org was would giving ideas from every from different levels and different perspectives. And so uh, we just took them all and and um, and, and 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 took it all in. Um, sometimes somebody was really excited about our website. So that was good to see. Um, but one thing that we did was, you know, we did really saw from this exercise that we didn't have a consistent voice. You can see consistency, consistency a couple of times in these pink ones. Um, and that we didn't have main points that we we're trying to hit. So we actually, from this decided to make a new website and, and redevelop our content strategy around that. So, and, and, and you can kind of see, uh, some of the ideas that were put into that. Um, and some of these ideas we still haven't got to yet. And it's been two years. Uh, we have not forgot about them. It's just sometimes you have to prioritize and sometimes projects get have to sunset or at least just be on the back burner for a while. And so, um, but yeah, that's there. And just to finish up, because I'm kind of internal volunteer leverage. Um, how do we continue to grow our internal volunteers? Um, you know, we're a volunteer organization. So that's how we are started. Uh, that's how we are today. And that's how we'll be in the future. So it's always something that we talk about. Um, so in the end, when you get done, um, you know, at, at sharing all this, we ultimately end up with multiple whiteboards or walls or, you know, um, jam boards of where we're viewed at from externally, where we're viewed in from internally, what areas do we need to get better at? Um, what areas are we doing well at that maybe we just need to keep doing well at? And where are there opportunities for us to, to make improvement or to continue to grow? Um, and ultimately, if as you dig into those, you can definitely walk away uh, with priority projects. And that's ultimately where we end up every year is uh, after we do this, these um uh, whiteboards is these these uh, sessions this retreat me and my staff my paid staff will get together we'll take all the notes we'll take all our feedback and and we will group them and figure out okay what is a project we can do to fi fix this thorn or what is a project we can do to take advantage of this opportunity in, the, in this space that that was highlighted um we also will sometimes make notes of who who gave what or what who gave what suggestions or gave what ideas and then follow up with them individually to see, hey, you know, you said we, you know, we, you thought we had good content, but we had to get better at getting, you know, first person point of views. How, you know, how would you do that? Or, what, you know, what, what have you seen, what ways have you seen that done? Um, and so sometimes we'll follow up, but it, eventually we get to where we have a list of 10 to 15 projects for the next year that we want to focus on based off all this data that we've pulled and, and, and grown firsthand with the people and organization. Um, <clears throat> the reason why we call it a resi resiliency reset is because uh, for us, this is how we get better. Um, you know, this is how we uh, uh, constantly look at who we are and, and, and reaffirm that, uh, constantly look at what 
we are not doing that we should be doing and, and, and looking into how to grow that. And then constantly looking at new areas of opportunity. Um, and, you know, and, and again, we do this because we can get so siloed and, and, and it's, it's, it's something that's, I think just part of nonprofits and especially volunteer driven nonprofits where you have a lot of people doing a lot of little things or different things. Um, and it's just, it's really easy to get siloed. And so this is one of the things we do. It allows us to bounce back. It allows us to continue to grow. It allows us to be resilient. Uh, and, and so year in, year out, uh, we do it every, every year. Um, and again, like I said, at the end, we walk away with 10 to 15 projects. Um, the last thing that we do, and I don't know if you had to do this, but it's, it's up to you. Once we make the projects, I'll actually have my staff put them in order of priority. Um, I have them give rankings of one, you know, one being the most important to 14 being the least important. And I'll tally up the rankings and whatever is the highest ranking from my staff or we'll put them in order. That's what we focus on. And we just try to get one priority project done a month and, and we work our way down the list. Um, if we have leftovers, which almost every year we have a couple leftover, uh, that's okay. We will pick it up next year. We actually put it into our, uh, our, our, our jam boards and, and see why, if it's still an issue or if it, if it kind of solved itself. Um, but you know, if it's still there after a year, maybe we need to bump up the priority or maybe we need to reassess whether that's something we need to be doing anyway. So, um, it really is great once you, you know, get lined up, it takes several years to, to get perfect or I'm not even perfect. Should, that's a stupid word. Um, and, you know, to, to get better at it, it just, and then, and then, I will mix it up. So this year we actually did not do um, the questions I showed you. We had been doing that the last couple of years. What we did was we dove directly into the remaining priority projects from the year prior previously. So we had three leftovers from 2023 and we focused on those three because the reason why they were left over was because they were very, they were weaknesses of ours and very difficult to do. And so we wanted to use, you know, our whole org to kind of, do our process, our resil resiliency reset towards that directly. So 